talk about how to calculate limits of functions as x goes to infinity or negative infinity. So we're really looking at end behavior. What, what does the function tend to do um, as it, you know, x goes and just increases uh, unbounded? So one thing to keep in mind is you should remember the rules of rational functions that we talked about previously. So those rules, right, where if you have a rational function of the form, uh, you know, ax to the n plus terms divided by bx to the m plus terms, where, you know, n is the greatest power among the exponents on top, m is the greatest power among exponents on the bottom, then uh, you have to think about asymptotes. Okay, if n is less than m, then the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote, okay? If n equals m, then you're gonna have that y equals a over b is your horizontal asymptote. And if n is greater than m, that means there are no asymptotes, okay? Now, why is this important in computing limits to infinity? Uh, that's because if there are horizontal asymptotes, right, given the definition of asymptotes or the naive one we've been using, functions generally get closer and closer and closer, but never hit asymptotes uh, as they go to infinity, which means that the limit of a function as it goes to infinity is going to equal the value of any asymptotes that it has. If it has no asymptotes, chances are it's just going off to infinity um, and, and diverging. So uh, let's look at some examples. Let's say first, I have the limit as x goes to infinity of x squared, okay? Here, I look at this, and I think, well, what happens if x gets bigger? Always y gets bigger. There's just nothing I can do. This means that as this function, as I take larger and larger x values, I get larger and larger y values. So as x goes to infinity, the value of the function also goes to infinity. Okay, so that's the case where the function verges. It's okay to have something that goes to infinity. If I had negative infinity in here, right, my answer does not change. I could say as it goes to positive or negative infinity, right? Negative infinity, um, it's also going to go to infinity because of the fact that we have a square here. So you do account for, for powers, right? As I increase, put negative values of x in, uh, what's happening to the output? And I'm getting positive values out, and those values are getting larger, so it will equal positive infinity as well. Let's think about another case. What if I have the limit as x goes to infinity of x to the fourth plus 6x minus 2 divided by x plus 1? So in this case, my n is greater than my m, so there are no asymptotes. Uh, and think about <clears throat> when we're doing these limits to infinity, you can pretty much just ignore everything here. It doesn't matter. The function at lar for large values of x is dominated entirely by the term with the greatest power. If you were to compare this function at very large values of x, it would look the same as x cubed for large values of x. So what happens to x cubed as I get bigger and bigger and bigger values? it goes to infinity. So this is also equal to infinity. What if I did the limit as x goes to negative infinity of this same function of x to the fourth plus six x minus two over x plus one? Yeah, plus one. Well, if I do negative infinity, I'm gonna have positive on top, okay? Because uh, if I put a negative number and I take it to the fourth power, I get a positive out. And on the bottom, I'm gonna have a negative. So it behaves like x cubed, right? And if we plugged it into x cubed, we get the same thing. Negative to cube is gonna give you a negative number. So here we're gonna get negative infinity instead of positive infinity because we have a positive number divided by a negative number. We're not really plugging in infinity. We're just taking really large values and then just using the powers. We're basically plugging in negative one and just checking what the sign is going to be, okay? Let's do another one. Let's take the limit as x goes to infinity of x cubed minus one over x cubed plus two. So in this case, my leading terms have the same uh, power, which means there's gonna be an asymptote at y equals uh, a over b. So therefore, this is gonna approach one for very large values of x. So that's for positive infinity. If I plugged in negative infinity, I would end up negative cubed is gonna give me negative, negative cubed is gonna give me negative, negative over negative is positive, so I'm still gonna end up with one. So no matter what you put in, what your powers are, because you're always, if the powers match, you're dividing them by the power by itself, uh, you're always gonna get a positive number when you have n equal to m, okay? Let's look at the case where I have m, uh, the limit as x goes to infinity of, let's say, x plus two over x squared plus one. 
So in this case, the bottom is much, much bigger than the top, right? So as this becomes really large, uh, then this is gonna go to zero. And you know this as well from your rules of rational functions because uh, when n is greater than, uh, when n is less than m, there uh, the x-axis is a horizontal asymptote. If I were to do something a little different, if I did like the limit as x goes to infinity of the same function, right? x plus two over x squared plus one, and then I set out here, plus three, what would this limit be? So this limit, right, you can think about this two ways. Either one, you can kind of think of this as being a vertical shift, or two, you could think of it as just using the limit rule and splitting this. Limit as x goes to infinity of this, plus limit as x goes to infinity of three. So therefore, either way you do it, you're gonna get three, because this is an x-axis, and then you're, you're basically just adding three onto that. Um, and the limit, of course, as x goes to infinity of y equals three is equal to three, because it's always just three. Okay, so let's do some that are a little bit less straightforward. Uh, let's, let's add some absolute value in. Let's look at the limit as x goes to infinity of the absolute value of x divided by x, okay? Now, for this one, you're mostly checking sign, right? The powers match. If I put in a positive number, right, as x goes to infinity, we're interested in positive. So I'm gonna get a positive on top and a positive on the bottom. So that means that I'm gonna have one, okay? If I do the limit as x goes to negative infinity of this, now what do I have? Well, as I increase my values of negative uh, x but along the negative axis, I'm gonna have a positive on top, but we're still doing uh, absolute value of x over x, positive on top and a negative on the bottom, which means I'm gonna have positive over negative, which gives me negative, but the same you know, numerical answer. So I have a negative one here. Okay, because our top is positive, absolute value bars, and the bottom is negative because uh, we're just putting in large negative values of x. Okay. How about if I have the limit as x goes to infinity of the square root of x squared divided by x? Well, this is actually gonna be pretty much the same as this, right? If we square a number and then take its square root, that's just taking the absolute value of the number. So this is gonna give me the same thing. It's gonna give me one. If I put in a positive large x, I get positive squared is positive, square root of positive is positive and then I have divided by a positive, so I get a positive. If I were to do instead the limit as x goes to infinity of, or negative infinity, sorry, of this same thing, uh, I would get the same thing again as uh, this one. I would have the square root of x squared, so negative squared is positive, square root of positive, positive. We have that divided by a large negative number. So our positive over a negative gives us a negative, so I'm gonna end up with negative one here, okay? And let's look at one more Let's do a cube. Let's say I have x goes to infinity of uh, the cube root of x cubed divided by x. So here, if I put in a positive, it's gonna be positive, right? So I'm gonna get one. Uh, what if I do the limit as x goes to negative infinity of this? So now I have the same uh, x cubed. What is this gonna be? Well, on the bottom I have a negative. On the top, a negative cubed gives me a negative, and the cube root of a negative is a negative. So I have a negative over a negative, which is a positive. So we get something a little bit different than when we were doing um, the squared or absolute value cases, okay? So that's how you evaluate limits to infinity. You're largely thinking about your rules for rational functions and evaluating horizontal asymptotes. Uh, and in some cases, you do have to think about um, the signs. Just make sure that your signs are gonna give you the uh, correct sign of your answer.